Got them on all the time. Yes. The whole time. Very good. Well, I said. Could I have somebody uh, move to approve the agenda for this meeting? Uh, seconder? Ralph? Uh, declarations of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof? Uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, anybody have any issues with the minutes from the last meeting? Just that it said we had a meeting. The next meeting was July 27th, which was postponed until today. And I don't know if that's anything we need to fix or not. Or is it necessary? Is it um, no, I left it because that was what was agreed on at the meeting. And then, yeah, so have somebody moved to accept the approval of the minutes? Do you have to do that, Tom? Okay. Sure, with that, if we don't need to note that. Ralph, thank you. Uh, any delegations? No. Any correspondence? Okay. And Catherine has, is that the same one? Uh, how Click your button. This is from the Brighton Accessibility Advisory Committee, and it's a thank you for the video that we did. It is three $15 Tim cards. Oh, very nice. And it says, Dear Brighton Digital Archives, thank you so much for your assistance with the Accessibility Week videos. They were so well done, and we appreciate all your talent and time uh, on the project. Please have some treats for your meeting. Thanks for the accessibility committee. Uh, thank you, committee person. And I have to tell you um, that they sent something to me separately. It was a gift basket. And she said that she was sending something to, to um, our committee as well. So I took it as, as mine. <laughs> You did call and offer to share. <laughs> That's a very thoughtful uh, response and not one that you have seen very often. No, it was a very thoughtful response. Yeah. Uh, Hyacinth. Okay, I got an email from Owen. The, I got an email from Owen who we just did the Bright Night Remember. And he said that his club is always looking for speakers and entertainment for our club meetings. Maybe the digital group would come to a meeting and speak to what you are doing and show something other than me that you have done. This can't happen until we get off of Zoom. So I replied to him and said, just give us the details. And the Lats Alliance said <clears throat> and that we would be able to come up with something. Very nice. Very nice. So we will, we will wait for them to contact us. Excellent, excellent. I've sent the list of things that I would like to uh, Tom and I have a breakdown here somewhere. It's basically just one more um, micro SD card for the uh, drone and five USB uh, drives. Uh, they're, they're just little thumb drives. We've always we bought them in, in numbers before, but they vanish. They just disappear. So I'd like to, every time I need one now, I look at an empty shelf. Or, um, so I'd like that replaced. And if, if, we can approve that here. Uh, Tom will go ahead and order it. That's it. I think I, I guess I got the numbers wrong. What I listed, uh, I had it listed as one USB USB card, but I might be wrong. 
Uh, the sand disk is a bat. It's a number of drives, isn't it? Oh, that's like. No, no, no. The, it's the the one is a five pack. Okay. And then the the two is the the um, the micros. And the, they're for the drone. I thought it was one, but <laughs> apparently it's two. So do we need a motion for that? That the committee approve the purchase of five USB drives and one SD card as shown on the attachment. Oh, I'll move that. Or sorry, two. One five pack and two one packs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. I know. <laughs> um, Hyacinth and Joe, do you want to give us an update on the Brighton I Remember series? We've been doing lots of interesting things. Um, so Peter's, so the Peter Stewart video is close to being done. We've still got a few pictures that we have to add and a couple of little tweaks. And that should be up and going in the next couple of weeks, I think. Right, Ralph? Yeah. As you just suggested that we do something spectacular about the premiere of this, this video, do we have any thoughts on that? Well, I think that um, because it has a wide interest in, in the community, that we should on our Facebook and site and the municipalities website and Facebook site build a little bit of interest with people coming up. So maybe posts, maybe Caroline could help with this, maybe posts about tidbits about, uh, is it Peter Owen next? So about uh, Peter Stewart, so little tidbits about Peter just to get their interest. Did you know uh, this resident of, um, of Brighton was a key player in the conservative government or whatever he did there with, was it Bill Davis? No, oh. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> well, whatever tidbits you think are interesting. So, I mean, I think that we're, you're doing all of this fantastic work and it's time for us to prepare people and let them know so that there is um, some excitement. About Do you mean like a hook? Yeah. And maybe not just one. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could post something new every day as long as it's short and Catherine's available. You know, it can be one line, one question. Could, yeah. Could we do it as in um, what did he do to change the evolution yeah. of farming in this area. Yeah, that's a big question. Yeah, that would be fantastic. And then that sort of thing. To... And everything should have the date when we're going to release it. So. so if you can, because you're intimately familiar with the content of it, if you sent me a couple of tidbits, like whatever, however many, how, what do we want to do? Five, 10 teasers? I, I think as many as you want to do, Catherine. As many as you want, and it just has to be point form. And I can just schedule them. So that's, and then I'll yeah. coordinate with Caroline at the municipality and she can do her part. And I think there's some probably other organizations. I don't know, the Cattlemen's, um, what is it, the Cattlemen's? Anyway, thank you. Um, Dairy Association, FCC, different things like that. We can coordinate a little bit with or tag them and, and get it out there a little bit more. But if you can come up with the, with the teasers, okay. I can schedule that easily. Okay. I would also suggest, and maybe not for this particular uh, episode, but uh, maybe we start to have um, a screening. You know, maybe in the park, if the weather's nice, you could invite people to come and see it. How long is it? How long are they? P Peter is. Yeah, so minutes. around so 21 short, minutes. But, you know, it might be something to do or something to think about in the future and invite the general public. But Has any video been um, presented at the, the new uh, Memorial Park? Stand? Not that I know of. Yeah, Do they? Yeah. So they, they've done Not this year. Well, maybe we could do all of them. Have a meet your citizens of Brighton night. Danny can play his guitar. <laughs> <laughs> 
anyways, that's just a thought, maybe not this time, but you know, it's building interest in the, uh, in the series. And I think from that, other people might come forward as well with different stories, not that you need more work. But, uh, now, three of us are intimate with the, the work with the, the, those three um, videos. Would the rest of you like to see them? Yeah. Do you want me to? You know, I can po post them when they're ready on to uh, YouTube um, without an announcement and they, they'll just be there um, yeah. and you can look at them. Is that okay? Hi, Mary. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's. Okay. Well, I, I mean, when when is the release date for the? Uh, What's coming first, Peter's doing? Yeah. 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 Peter's video will be finished once we've gone up and taken some pictures and we placed them in the video. Right. All the work that's necessary for the video has been done, except for some tweaks. Right. Mm -hmm. So once we've done that, it'll be quick. Yeah. The, the, the problem, though, is of course. What? Tom, what is it? Municipal property in in the park? You can have a maximum of a hundred people. It just was wow. COVID right now. It's a. You think you. Well, you think we're going to get 100 people, you're an optimist. I am, absolutely. <laughs> what if you had a loop going at the park where it just ran all day and just told people they could come anytime? Yeah, we could actually run it during Apple Fest. That might be interesting. Yeah. Uh oh, oh. <laughs> grown, but a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh. Oh. Well, I think this is something we might need to work up a little bit more. Like, I mean, do we want to have a private screening first with friends? Like, obviously, there's a lot of connections in the community. So um, uh, I would be willing to leave this till the next one, the, the release of the next one, unless somebody wants to push forward with it now. Okay, well, okay. That's your suggestion that we release two at the same time. Uh, I, I think that I, I don't, I'm, I have no master plan for this, but I think however we can do it, we just want to invite the community into the work that we're doing. So, uh, so however we manage that. So maybe we can go away and at our next working group meeting, we can discuss it and see what we think is feasible and then check back with uh, the, the municipality. Okay. All right. More? Hi, so Joe. I've been working on the um, that uh, Smith lady and I still have not heard back from the Andersons. And I've called twice. I don't know how much to push it. She knows she's leaving it up to her husband to make the connection though. So if he's not doing it, uh, what's the name again? No, no. The name. Howell. Howell. She's at Crown Ridge. Oh. So uh, well, he's, we need the connection with the nephews to get to Susan, Crown Ridge. So my fear is that she's elderly. And yeah, um, 
Next is <clears throat> Owen Gibb, which we're, um, that'll be our next edit. And uh, then Linda Reed after that, I'm hoping. And, uh, and then we've got a couple more that we're looking at. And I think that's that's wonderful. Yeah, I've talked to her a few times and she's yeah, and family too is coming and visiting and stuff like that. Great. Well, uh, it's incredible what you guys are doing. And I do want to go on a shoot sometime when I'm allowed to, but, uh, you know, whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'll just, I'll be quiet. I won't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, the BDA strategic plan, unless anybody has anything more for the Brighton I Remember series? No? Okay. I think it's going very well. That's why we're sp we spend so little time on it because I know that it's going forward. Yes, you can. Um, Ralph and Hyacinth and Joe let me be part of the Owen Gibb shoot. And it's the first time I've been involved with the Brighton I Remember. And it is some impressive setup you have running. Um, the equipment we've been able to purchase through funding from the municipality and the Brian Todd Memorial Community Fund, we went in, we set up, and when I say we, I mean Ralph and Swen. Um, Joe and Hyacinth guided the whole thing through. I've been on professional movie sets. It was reminiscent of that. It was very, very impressive the way it was done. The respect for the people, the respect for the property, and it was smooth and it was, it just went so beautifully. And to see, it, Owen is the only one I, I had that I've seen that, but just, just how he felt that a spotlight was on him and that, that he, it was what he has done and is doing with his life and with the Lions Club and what they have done that is relevant today. It, it, it glowed. It wasn't so congratulations to you all and, and to our community partners who make this possible with the yeah. equipment. It looks really good. It is really good. So well done. Well done. I and I, I've got to add my team are the greatest they all carry their weight and nobody sits down and everybody knows what the, what, what we're supposed to do what the conclusion of it will be and we're in and out very quickly and i'm very pleased with how the, all that's worked out i'm not surprised but it's really uh it's made it all happen and we can get a, many many more stories which i think is one of our most important um goals here I love how you yeah but he was such a good guy it's easy to do that with him some people are as as easily yeah a little more difficult yeah okay congratulations uh, the BDA strategic plan that I'm uh, submitting today uh, to go to council uh, for review. I mean, this has been ongoing for a while, but I felt it's really uh, important because of the quality work that I think the committee has been doing since before my time, for sure. But to show everyone that we are really keeping track and the goal of the strategic plan is to ensure that none of this information is lost, that we have a recorded and saved history of the municipality and uh, that we're doing it in a way that um, conforms with all of the uh, standard database management that is in use today. So um, this is a really succinct report of what we are doing and what we plan to do. And, uh, and Ralph has given a breakdown of uh, the image collections and what it all means. So, um, so I would just like to move that this goes to council. That would have yeah, um, I'm thinking maybe like a motion would be that the committee approve the BDA strategic plan as presented or amended, if you wanted to do anything about that. 
and, and that the committee recommend council adopt the DDA strategic plan. Um, and then, like I was saying in the email, maybe that night when these minutes go, um, we could get you to do a delegation to sort of talk it through. And then, um, and then that would allow council to just adopt it when, when the minutes go through. Is it, is it important to note that it's a, a data storage strategic plan and not a BDA strategic plan? Does that matter? On that one? So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess maybe approve, I think, just. Um, how, how it works from here would be these minutes will be approved at your next meeting and then they'll go to council okay. for adoption. So it'll probably be uh, October. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, any questions about it? I guess that's too late. But if anybody has any questions, they can ask me at, or Ralph or Catherine separately. The memory junction discussion, I know this was on the last agenda when I wasn't here and uh, I never followed up on it, but I noticed that memory junction is having an auction sale this uh, Thursday and Friday. So I noticed also that there were a lot of photographs listed as auction items. So that made me a little concerned. Um, I don't know this gentleman, I can't remember his name, Artini. Yeah, I don't know Art, uh, but I'm happy to approach him today and ask about these photos, or have they already been all scanned? Flash and I spent quite a bit of time down at uh, Memory Junction, and we did scan a lot of photographs, but I don't know that we scanned everything. Um, and it would be difficult to figure out what it is we've collected and what we haven't, but um, we could have another look. Um, I could ask him if he would take them out of the auction. Like, I don't know how many he has. I don't, I don't want him to lose on account of this. Um, I, well, why don't I ask and tell him that we would like to have this last chance to, um, to go through the photographs. Uh, what's today, Wednesday? Yeah, it is. Maybe it's too late. Worth a try. What I, what I can do is I can come up with a complete list of all of the photos we have taken of, of the images from um, Memory Junction. I don't think there's time to compare or go through or have them look for now. Should we just let them go? Maybe it'd be worthwhile having a talk with Art just to see what it is he's selling and if yeah. in fact everything is being sold. Maybe there's stuff that he figures it doesn't really have value. Yeah, and I know we work with Art. Art very interested in our interests, and yes. uh, um, he would cooperate. Do you have his contact information? Well, I don't need it right now, but uh, I'll get it from you. Okay. Send that to you already. We talked about this before. Possibly. <laughs> okay. Any uh, anything else on Memory Junction? Uh, the Heritage Advisory Committee collaboration. So I met with Dave Cutler. He's kind of my neighbor and my go-to gardener, but um, uh, I don't, there doesn't seem, there didn't seem to be any animosity or maybe that was in the past. I don't know. Um, I thought when we were asking for images of the historical plaques, it was the, the Ontario ones, those blue metal ones. But uh, he says the images for the other ones, like there is one at Presque Isle, which talks about the Presque Isle Hotel and the government dock, that they are stored here at the municipality, that somebody here has all of those, um, the materials that made those. So I have no idea who that would be, Tom. Um, like the actual physical materials to, to make the plaques? 
Yeah, the proofs. Oh. Like not the hard wood board or whatever. Thanks. Yeah, we we can probably <laughs> track those down. They might be in the planning. They might be saved in the planning file somewhere. Nobody that I have spoken to at Presque Isle because they're working, we want to fix up that little park where the government dock is, uh, seems to know who was in charge of this. There's a lot of contributors listed, but nobody seems to know who was the driving force with it. So if you could find that out too, that would be good. Mm -hmm. They'd probably have a lot of information and name materials. So the goal was that we would uh, scan these materials and be able to share them on the BDA uh, Facebook page. I guess we could also put them in the BDA website. So, I mean, that's another story that we're working on. So, uh, uh, Yeah, uh, Dave mentioned, uh, you know, um, collaborating uh, uh, with us on the Apple Fest uh, presentation this year, if there was going to be one. And, uh, and I talked about History Month, if there's, we haven't made a decision yet about what we're going to do with that. But uh, if, if we went larger, that would be my goal is to do some a history uh, presentation or event that would do two things it would work for the municipality because it would uh, bring tourists in for genealogy interest whatever and um, it could be uh, it, it could actually earn some money and it would be something that the, the heritage uh, committee and and uh, we could work with them on it any comments I just had one thing. I, I brought it up to at the last Heritage Advisory yeah. meeting, maybe two weeks ago, I guess. Yeah. Um, and there was a little bit of confusion about the history idea because um, the chair was under the impression that that was not going to happen. And I, I so I said, okay, I'll, I'll refocus the conversation. <laughs> so basically, they were hoping that maybe if the plan is to move forward with some sort of collaboration that there be like a joint meeting of the yes. two committees um, so that it's not back and forth back and forth um we can just hash it out right in in person i thing. totally agree i think that what i would like to investigate first and i am getting those weekly funding opportunities from Northumberland County Archives. And I, I did pull one out and I've been looking at them every week to see if there's funding from Heritage to do something like this, to apply for funds. So, um, so that's why there's nothing concrete about it. Uh, you know, it's just an idea for me now, but uh, I mean, I've seen other communities where history really is a tourist attraction. I just don't think it's a tour tourist attraction in the middle of February when history week or is it February that's history month. So um, I will think that through a little bit more and then uh, see what we have uh, after that. Um, I think that's about it. They're prepared to discuss with us also the images of the heritage houses, but that would have to be a sign off by the owners. Uh, and Dave actually had some good stories about heritage properties that were lost, even though they were uh, supposed to be heritage properties. So I think that if we can pull some of those pictures as well, um, then we can use them and it will again give us more content and a profile. Any questions? Catherine? You're good? Okay. Are there any other items or any other discussions that we should have at this time? I like those.
we did a post on Trivia Tuesday. No, it wasn't on Trivia Tuesday. It was just on Facebook, a picture I came across in the Girtan collection. And again, it was Alf Gagnon's camp. And I posted it on Facebook. And is it Chuck Cooper? One of the Coopers from Gosport. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the first name. But he said that they still do some kind of fish activities there. What kind, what, what's the nets that they, what's that called? Sorry? Hoop nets. Okay, yeah, I think. It, anyway, it was something about fishing and they still fish off of, and they call it Gagnon's Camp. And it's just down the street from you. Um, Suzanne Scanlon commented on it. Okay, we're streaming. Um, <laughs> anyway, he says they still do that. And that was, that's what the old camp was. So we have potentially identified the property that's in this 190 something postcard, but there's lots of good stuff coming through there and personal stories. Like when we did the hurricane or the tornado one, um, watermelons rolling down the street and just, just little vignettes, which are really cool, but it's, it's working well. Um, we're getting good traffic and we're bringing in people who normally don't comment on our Facebook posts, which, so the audience is growing all the time. And, and again, kudos to Caroline. She's really spearheaded this, done, done a great job. So good traffic. I think that falls under correspondence, not sure, but I'm happy with it. Can I just add something? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to mention that we are moving forward on this year's 2022 calendar. Um, uh, and uh, we are, we've moved forward on the connection with Cornerstone and we'll be assisting in the Walk a Mile uh, project for this year. Uh, okay. Well, we've, we've talked about this um, uh, outside of meetings. Um, uh, we do need to approve the funding for the calendars. Um, uh, and we had talked about doubling the number of calendars we would produce this year because then we have, uh, uh, we have some money available because we haven't done the annual uh, history event this year. Right. So the calendar will be out of it. It could be. Council needs to approve it. We have the money. We just have to approve it amongst ourselves. Um, yes, the only thing I can't come up with at this point is a number because we haven't um, gotten the quotes on it yet, but um, we would like to set aside whatever funds it takes to produce 1,000 instead of the annual 500 that we've been producing um, for 2022 calendars that we will hopefully have ready by the end of September, then we can use October, November, December to distribute the 2022 calendars to all the community. We Does that need to be a motion, Tom, or is that just a comment? I think we should do a motion and put an upset limit. Like, so. Of cost? Yeah, so that way, if like, <laughs> let's estimate higher than you think it would potentially be. And then that way you've already approved it. Um, do does anybody remember last year's no. cost for five hundred calendars? Uh, five hundred was about two thousand dollars plus HST. And when we spoke 
to the printer and we will be getting three quotes for this one. Um, to do 500 was about 2000 to do 1000 was slightly less expensive like maybe around the 35 3600 dollar range um so if we set an upper limit of 4000 covid inflation being what it is um does that make sense how i would put it up i'd put it up to 4500 okay is that a motion let the committee approve uh, or pre-approve the expenditure of up to forty-five hundred dollars for the is it 2021, 2022 calendars? Or no, 2020. 2022 calendars. Yeah. Move that. Any objections? And uh, the other thing I left off the agenda was an update on the walk a mile in her shoes, which is uh, done uh, with the Cornerstone Family Violence Pre Prevention Center. And last year, because of COVID, Ralph did uh, um, and others did uh, a video. How long was it? Three minute video. It was a three minute video. And that was there, that was the event that year. But um, Emily Rowley and Janelle Eisler, who is the uh, marketing person at Cornerstone, we met and we sort of um, hashed out what they want to do this year, which is presented uh, going to be a, an obstacle course in Memorial Park on September 23rd, which is the opening night of Apple Fest, or not, I don't know, but anyway. Uh, and, Emily has contacted all the groups, the OPP, the firemen to bring equipment and to help set it up. And she's blocked off that road. What's that road called? That, uh, Veterans Way, she's blocked that off. So they're all ready to go, but essentially they have just asked Ralph or the BDA if we could do a promotion piece using cuts from last year's video. They do not feel that they need to have a full video of the event because they'll have some coverage. And so uh, I'm, I just today put, you know, Ralph and, and Janelle together to figure that out. And then we discussed participating in it by uh, taking photos and maybe some video of the actual event that we can show after. I asked her if she knew the percentage of women or people from uh, municipality of Brighton who use this service. And she said they couldn't break it down that specifically, but, and I was saying, well, we're an older community. She said the greatest percentage is women over 55, which surprised me that use their services. So, um, so they do wanna focus on Brighton. They do want to have more of a presence here. Okay. More work for Ralph. <laughs> okay anything else we have left off that anything you want to hear mary that we've been doing that we haven't been clear about we've decided to make life easier for ourselves and continue with last year's theme because we have a lot of really great postcards and we've actually yesterday was it yesterday Monday, that Monday. Catherine and I sat together. <laughs> and we, we we went through all of the postcards available and selected forty five that we thought were absolutely great. And um, the group is now deciding what fourteen of those forty five images we'll use on this calendar. Mm -hmm.
Is Eleanor Sheila Whitfield or Sheila? And uh, Sheila told me some wonderful stories about her. She sounds like a fascinating person. I just remembered something. Um, I'd like to spend $50. <laughs> um, just before, a week before our last shoot, um, I did a setup with Catherine to, to teach her the audio setup. And at that meeting, I discovered I couldn't find the quick release plate for our tripod. It's just a little piece of metal, it's a black thing. And, uh, you have to have it to be able to connect your camera to a tripod. I've been through this before with, with other things. These are things that are easily misplaced because you're always exchanging um, quick release temp um, plates. And um, so I misplaced it and I said, we need two of them and I need one for this shoot coming up. So I ordered it on my own without having approval to do so. Um, and I would like approval now to be paid back for that. Um, you know what let's just add it to the other motion and we'll just what, what did you call it again the it's called a uh, quick release plate and by the Done. way i found the original it's a, it's a black piece of metal in a black bag i looked at it 25 times i didn't see it and then the day before the shoot I had to go through everything and there it was. Like, yeah, the, the, you know, preferred procedure would be like you said, sort of, you pass it through to me, I, I buy it. But in, in a situation like that, where it's something you need at, at the time and you can't wait till for approval at the next meeting, I think it's appropriate to do it that way and then and then uh, rectify it or ratify it at the following meeting, just like we did. Is there any chance that we could set up a, a, you know, a small petty cash fund where we wouldn't have to go through an approval process that for, if it's for something that's like less than fifty dollars we could just take it out of petty cash um i'll have to check with our uh director of finance on that just to make sure i think it's really the only option uh, that I'm aware of, but I can still look into it just to find out.
give me the opportunity. <laughs> Sorry, we have uh, loosely discussed uh, doing something with the Brian Todd Memorial Fund to thank them for what they've done and to kind of celebrate what they're doing. And we were thinking of a photo shoot maybe outside and with uh, their members and uh, uh, all the new equipment that they've, they've bought. And then Ralph can do a video of it and they can have it and we can share it as well. So. We'll put that on for the next agenda, okay? And they like that. All right. Um, that's it then. Uh, would somebody please move that this meeting is adjourned? Oh, we have to set the next date. Okay, what's that? Uh, I can't possibly. I've got September 28th. Sounds good. That's uh, British Home Child Day in Canada. So we can celebrate that too. So the next meeting will be September 28th at one o'clock in Chambers. We'll see as long as everything is still. Okay, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Would somebody like to adjourn the meeting? I adjourn this meeting. You don't need a seconder and you don't need to vote on it. I think that I was duped into thinking that.